Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Miklós Iyes, I am the president of the Hungarian Society of Arterial Stiffness. My scientific activities joins me to the University of Page, Department of Cardiology. In my lectures, I would like to talk about the theoretical and practical questions of the non-invasive measurement of arterial stiffness. In the part one, I would like to talk about why do we have to measure arterial stiffness at all. The answer is given in the European Society of Hypertension and European Society of Cardiology guidelines issued in 2013 for the management of the arterial hypertension. In this guideline, the central blood pressure measurement is suggested because it turned to be that the central blood pressure has an independent prognostic value to reveal cardiovascular events and the predictive value is better than the blood pressure measured in the brachial artery. Furthermore, measuring the central blood pressure provides information for us about the central hemodynamic effect of the different antihypertensive drugs. For example, beta blockers do not reduce sufficiently the central blood pressure, while calcium channel blockers, ARBs, or AC inhibitors are excellent in reducing the central blood pressure as well. The aortic pass velocity is the marker of the aortic wall characteristics, namely, the more rigid, the stiffer the aortic wall, the higher the aortic pass velocity. The increased aortic pass velocity carries predictive value for fatal and non-fatal cardiovascular events in hypertensive patients. We do have data that not only it carries prognostic value in hypertension, hypertensive patients, but also in, in end-stage renal disease subjects, in diabetic subjects, and also in general population. The value of the aortic pass velocity measurement is very high because the power to reveal adverse cardiac events is independent from the traditional risk factors, such as score or frame gambling scoring. It means that we may have a patient who is young, having no smoker, normal cholesterol, normal blood pressure, but if the aortic pass velocity is high, we have to consider this patient to be in high cardiovascular risk. Furthermore, it is very common that when we measure the patient uh, framing memory scoring and score evaluation, this value provides us intermediate risk. In the intermediate or intermediate risk, if we use the aortic pass velocity measurement, we can reclassify the subjects into the lower and higher cardiovascular risks regarding the value of the measured aortic pass velocity. The second reason why we do have to measure the aortic stiffness is that uh, the parameters provided by the pass wave analysis and the pass wave velocity measurement can reveal asymptomatic atherosclerosis or arteriosclerosis in early time, and it is equal to detect the high cardiovascular risk in very early stage. We do have to keep in our mind that the stroke, coronary artery disease, and peripheral artery disease, together the cardiovascular diseases, are ha having a common root, which is atherosclerosis, and uh, we used to say that atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases, which is the proper term, and this kind of uh, clinical manifestation are seen in stroke, coronary artery disease, and peripheral artery disease. So, measuring the aortic parameters, aortic pass velocity, and augmentation index, and uh, central blood pressure 
provides us information about the uh, early atherosclerosis. Indeed, we do have data which proves the association between the increased aortic stiffness, arterial stiffness, and the atherosclerosis. In the large population-based study, in the Rotterdam study, the arterial stiffness tend to be a strongly associated with the atherosclerosis at various sites in the arch-vascular tree. In another trial uh, published by McEnery, the aortic calcification tend to be strongly associated with aortic stiffness and with isolated systolic hypertension in healthy individuals. So, in the other terms, we can say that if we do measure the aortic pulse velocity, basically we do measure the characteristics of the aortic wall. Again, the higher the aortic pulse velocity, the more rigid, I would say, the stiffer the aortic wall. Thus, due to vascular calcification, due to atherosclerosis and arteriosclerosis, the aortic wall is getting to be more rigid, stiffer, and calcified, and this can be detected precisely by measuring the aortic pass velocity. The question comes up, do we have any good screening method for detecting the asymptomatic atherosclerosis? Unfortunately not. As it is written and highlighted in the shape concept by Nagavi et al., there is an imperative to develop a new paradigm to screen for subclinical atherosclerosis because despite that we have a lot of screening method for tumorous diseases, we do not have any accepted structure and system to screen for asymptomatic atherosclerosis. However, the major goal would be to prevent the asymptomatic atherosclerosis to be uh, translated and to be uh, achieved a deadly and costly clinical and asymptomatic stage. If we are looking about the epidemiology of the atherosclerosis, we have to remember the PDA study. The study is uh, called Prevalence and Extent of Atherosclerosis in Adolescents and Young Adults. This outstanding trial, comprised of uh, more than 2,800 subjects who died in uh, their age between 15 and 34 years, due to external causes such as victims, suicides, or accident, and they underwent autopsy. And the main outcome of the autopsy measures were extent, prevalence, and the topography of the atherosclerotic lesions. The results are rather shocking. Here we can see that in the abdominal aorta, the prevalence of fibrous plaque was more than 13% among white young men, teenagers between age of 15 to 19 years, and the calcification of these plaques was 1.4%. If we go up to the age range of 30 to 34, we can see a very large increase in the prevalence of the fibrous plaque to be 65.2%, and almost 13% of them had been calcified. The situation is not so much better among the white men, because in their teenager time, the prevalence of the fibrous plaque in the abdominal aorta is 6.2%. 8% while in age range of 30 to 34 it went up to 61.5% and 13.2% these plaques were calcified. So we can conclude from these results, very shocking results, that even in the young adult age the aortic calcification occurs in about 
13% of the subjects. It is not so much surprise that we can see, of course, and luckily not so often, tragical cardiovascular events in its very young age, especially among sporty subjects. Another study also shows very, very nicely the importance of the uh, measurement of the early atherosclerosis, even among teenagers and young adults. The study showed a high prevalence of coronary atherosclerosis in this very young group, and the measurements were performed with intravascular ultrasound. In this extremely nice study, heart transplanted subjects were studied by intravascular ultrasound. After 30 days of the heart transplantation, they performed this examination on more than 260 subjects. The results show that more than 50% of the subjects, exactly 51.9% of the subjects, had atherosclerotic lesions in their coronary arteries, despite that the age, average age of the donor hearts was only 33.4 years. Let me show you an example. Here you can see a thickening of the intima in the left anterior descending artery in a young adult, young teenager, 17 years old man. This is the increased picture. And also you can see very advanced coronary atherosclerosis in a young 32 years old lady in the left circumflex and the ramus branch coronary arteries. If the detection of the non-invasive atherosclerosis could be so important, let us see, do we have methods, non-invasive methods, to reveal the asymptomatic atherosclerosis? Yes, indeed, we have data and we have methods such as ankle brachial index, intermedia thickening measurement by ultrasound, computer tomography of the coronary arteries, magnetic resonance, flow-mediated vasodilatation, and arterial function measurement, arterial stiffness measurement with different methods. Let's start with the ankle brachial index. This is a perfect method to detect the peripheral arterial disease. However, detecting the asymptomatic atherosclerosis, it's a bit late uh, warning system, late warning technology method. Although it is relatively easy to measure, however, if we wish to evaluate the sensitivity and the specificity of the ankle brachial index to predict future cardiovascular events, the value and the sensitivity is very disappointing. Here we can see that only 16.5% the sensitivity of the ankle brachial index to coronary heart disease and merely 16% for stroke. Thus, the conclusion could be done that due to the low sensitivity, although high specificity, of course, the ankle brachial index cannot be used as a generic screening test. The intima media thickening measurement by ultrasound is an excellent method. However, it requires trained personnel and then some, some time, considerable time. Although it detects early stage of thickening the intima media, but this is not the daily method for the primary care physicians. The computer tomography of the coronary arteries and the calcium score of the coronary arteries evaluation is a perfect, excellent method. It's getting to be more and more popular. However, it is expensive and provides a rather large X-ray dose, although it is decreasing as the technical development is going on. Actually, it cannot be considered to be a screening method. More or less the same is valid for the magnetic resonance. 
The flow-mated vessel dilatation, FMD, is a perfect method to reveal the endothelial dysfunction. We can say this is the gold standard method to diagnose the endothelial dysfunction. It detects the very early stage of the asymptomatic atherosclerosis. However, it is uh, very difficult, rather expensive, expensive, takes a rather long time, and this is only limited to the research labs. And just recently, the other function measurement turned to be one very promising and excellent method to reveal and to detect the asymptomatic atherosclerosis. Here we can see a very important uh, message and very important relationship between the aortic stiffness or aortic pulse velocity and the relationship between the classical traditional risk factors. Here we can see that basically the aortic stiffness or arterial stiffness measured as aortic pulse velocity provides a cumulative information because it's a cumulative measure of different damaging effects of the traditional risk factors. Here in these pictures we can see that the traditional risk factors such as blood pressure, lipids, sugar, and so on, are fluctuating in our life, while the aortic pulse velocity and the arterial stiffness, which suffers all of the unfavorable changes in the classical traditional risk factors, are suffering the damage and it is going continuously with the age. Thus, if you measure the so-called SCORE analysis and SCORE methods like Framingham or SCORE, we can only have a snapshot about the whole history which could be seen by the evaluation of the arterial stiffness. So, answering the formerly addressed question, why do we have to analyze pulse wave? Why we do have to measure aortic pulse velocity? And why do we have to measure arterial stiffness? Is that because the arterial stiffness is a cumulative measure of the damaging effects of the traditional cardiovascular risk markers and factors on the arterial wall with aging. Furthermore, the increased aortic stiffness turned to be an independent prognostic marker of the later developing cardiovascular events, independent from the classical traditional risk factors. Furthermore, because the increased arterial stiffness can develop very early, and it could develop this increased arterial stiffness and can be shown in the early asymptomatic atherosclerosis time and phase. Lastly, which is very, very, very disappointing that the atherosclerosis and the asymptomatic atherosclerosis may begin in a very, very young age, and it has been shown by excellent studies such as PDA study and the intravascular coronary artery atherosclerosis study. Thank you for your attention.